Hi, my name is Raquel, and in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. One of those words, they don't translate correctly. And, you know, there's so many lies that have gone on in this world, like this weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But right there is the word karagma that they don't translate correctly. That means no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And there's the Liddell Scott Unabridged Greek English Lexicon. I took a photocopy of it and enlarged it. And you can see the word karagma means the impress on the coin or stamp money coin. So, I, like, this has been crazy week, you know, and with all this information, like, icebergs are blowing off of Antarctica, and they say it's inevitable that we're going to have, like, a 30-foot rise in the sea level, and I, I'm not quite too sure how soon that's going to be, but, like, maybe 20, 30 years from now, there, it's going to be, like, too bad to live in Florida or a lot of other places like Bangladesh and... So they're having all these problems because of global warming and like in Syria where their drought is causing all these refugees and all these wars and it's like on the front page of the New York Times today they had this, they're, you know, the their people are going crazy. We spent all this time and money and soldiers' lives to fight in this war and now they're showing that there's a bunch of people in Baghdad that are willing to defend the country you know, but we'll see, you know, some of the people down there in Iraq have taken off their uniforms and fled. There's, like, now more refugees, and it's all this Sunni, uh, Shia, like, sectarian violence that is just so ridiculous. You know, these people, they've got all this problem with the water around there, and now they want to fight, and it's all the oil, too, and if we burn up all this oil... It's going to be like too much CO2 in the atmosphere and it's going to warm up the whole world. And I've been telling you about this global warming thing and it's like the latest like conspiracy that I've discovered. And it's so scary that I've tried to kind of figure out more about the history of this. <clears throat> you know, like when did they first find out that we were heading for CO2 disaster in the atmosphere? And it really didn't come until the late 60s. <clears throat> and especially when they had these photographs from these satellites showing the Earth down there, you know, and they showed the atmosphere and the clouds. And, you know, you just really felt like the Earth was some kind of organism. It was a living organism. When you first saw this, it was, you know, in the 70s, it was like Gaia and Mother Earth. And, and that was the whole dawning of the age of Aquarius and everything, and that the hippies and everybody thought that everything was going to be blissful and wonderful, you know, with the LSD and, uh, you know, the marijuana and the peace and love and all that stuff that got ruined. Well, first they killed Kennedy and started drafting people to fight in this Vietnam War, which is a big, a big fraud. They, they had a false flag kind of a thing to get people upset, it was called the Tonkin Gulf Incident, and they claimed that the Viet Cong had bombers that bombed one of our battleships over there. You know, it's it's a typical false flag where they make a pretext to invade, and then they start a war over something that was a big fraud, and just like in um, well Pearl Harbor, they kind of goaded the Viet, the Japanese to bomb Pearl Harbor and they left they took the main aircraft carriers out of Pearl Harbor and they left a bunch of old battleships and things that they could sacrifice I don't remember how many soldiers died there but it was about the same amount of people that died in in the 9/11 fraud that got us involved in this these stupid wars that, and now we're growing all the opium in Afghanistan that is killing people all over the world and causing trouble. You know, opium is like a stupefier and it takes your mind off all the problems. They said that, like, the end of the hippies in the 60s was they flooded the ghettos with, like, heroin to 
like after they killed Martin Luther King and they killed Robert Kennedy, they ended up having to pacify all these riots and people were upset, you know, like, like Robert Kennedy, and I'm starting to read this book. I've got some books I want to share with you. This is going to be like my summer reading book. It's uh, called The um, Hidden History of the Kennedy Years. And you can see, uh, is that John Kennedy there with his brother? And they're both like, like really into some kind of heavy like conversation. And there they are again with their, uh, you know, these guys were like, they really cared about people and they cared about how, how, you know, the future and everything. And so this global warming thing didn't really become a big issue. It was, you know, like we had Al Gore who was aware of it and he wrote that book called, um, uh, and he made that movie that, you know, all about the global warming and earth in balance. And so, you know, it's like um, there's a lot of people now that are saying that we're going to end up going dark. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of people thought, and I used to think this just recently too, that like we're going to become, you know, we're going to run out of oil. You know, I figured, oh, dar darn, you know, we're going to have a serious like economic catastrophe because we're going to run out of oil. But the real problem that I, I see, and they've been talking about it in the newspapers recently, is like this Antarctic ice shelf is falling and it's inevitable. You know, if we suddenly stop driving cars and stop producing electricity and lived without air conditioning and refrigeration and everything else, then we still couldn't stop this Arctic ice shelf from melting and causing the oceans to rise 15 or 30 feet. And like the whole big, really big whole question is, you know, how fast is this going to happen? And this guy, Dr. McPherson, who wrote this book about going dark, he, he used to be a, he was a University of Arizona professor in uh, environmental studies at, here. And he uh, was editing a book about global warming. And mu he must have been looking at the charts. And um, they started becoming kind of aware of this in the 50s. And this man named Kierling went to the highest point in Hawaii on top of a volcano and started measuring the amount of CO2 in the air. And this has been steadily going up and up and up. And it hasn't been this high, 400 parts per million, for a long time. And the last time it was this high was like when there were dinosaurs here. And so like there's a 40 year lag between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and when the climate's going to change. I mean, this has been going so fast and so furious because, you know, the industrial revolution and, and the population explosion. And so we've been just like burning fossil fuels like crazy and it's releasing all this CO2 in the atmosphere. And there's people, a lot of more people are just coming out every day in these magazines and everywhere, especially like The Guardian, the British newspaper. They're, you know, they're talking about how this global warming is a lot worse than they're telling us. And they are telling us quite a bit about it. You know, it's like I've got some articles here we can share with you. I'm going to tell you that Les Claypool is going to be at the Rialto tonight and I might try to make it over there. I remember he had a really good, he was really good at the um, Bonnaroo Festival a while ago and he sang um, that Aqualung or no, um, by, um, oh gosh, what's that guy's name? Jethro Tull. Uh, in the shuffling darkness, the motorhead or whatever it is. So anyway, I might go there later tonight. And uh, But this climate change thing, Obama was talking about it, or in being interviewed. Yeah, he was on um, the Showtime thing. And this must have been in the, in the Sunday edition because they did a big two-page spread about this interview that Thomas Friedman, who is a a, a, a writer for the New York Times. He has kind of a dumb headline on here. 
you know, it's but but the point is at the very end you can see that the president is saying that we shouldn't become cynical about this. And I am very cynical about this. I'm really afraid that they're not telling us the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The most important thing is to guard against cynicism, responded the president. I want to make sure that everyone who has been watching this program on Showtime or listening to this interview, wherever it is, doesn't start concluding that, well, we're doomed. There's nothing we can do about it. There's a lot we can do about it. It's not going to happen as fast or as smoothly or as elegantly as we like. But if we are persistent, we will make progress. So Obama isn't saying in this article that the asteroid is coming and it's going to hit you. He's saying that, oh, let's just have some faith and not worry about it. And there really isn't anything we can do about it. It's kind of like if you wanted to know if this asteroid was going to come and hit you, would you want to know about it or not? You know, maybe I should have a warning before all my shows about this. You know, it's just something I found out about not too long ago. And I'm seriously scared and worried that, you know, it's too late. And I, there's a new book out and I don't have it with me, but I'm going to probably buy it because I've read a lot about it. In fact, the book, the guy that wrote the book, he makes a lot of quotations by, it, from this one by uh, Spencer Wirt about global warming. And, and they're saying that, you know, the whole history of this thing, like I'm telling you, it all started with this photograph of, from space of, of Earth with, you know, the clouds and the water. You know, you've got to figure that, you know, I've said this before, how unique this planet is. It's like we've got water, we're just the right distance from the sun, and we have um, just the right amount of acid in the oceans. And if there's too much carbon dioxide, which is, you know, I mean, the whole thing, it's, it's, it has to have a, an equilibrium. And just a two degree centigrade difference in the uh, temperature can cause crazy different things in the earth and the climate. And, you know, we're having these huge hurricanes and tornadoes and this um, polar vortex come down over the East Coast. And um, it's like this, this world is, we've been burning all those fossil fuels without thinking about the future and what kind of damage it could do. But it's all a kind of a recent thing. And I've seen just on TV today that the United States launched a new satellite that is going to specifically monitor the amount of carbon, carbon dioxide <clears throat> in the uh, atmosphere. But that's not the only thing we have to worry about. <clears throat> we have to worry about the... Um, Methane. <clears throat> if the Arctic Ocean warms up and um, melts all the ice, then it's going to warm the ocean up and cause all this methane to just um, start going up into the atmosphere. And the methane is like 30 times worse than the carbon dioxide. So it's like, you know, this is like, the most craziest thing in the whole world, you know. It's like civilization has existed, you know. We've got all this history, you know, the Roman Empire and and all this discovery, you know, the New World and and Galileo and, and Picasso and Leonardo da Vinci and all this stuff is just going to be totally trashed and wasted because we had to keep consuming, you know, burning fossil fuels like we tore out the trolleys in Los Angeles and just about every other city in order to make everybody burn fossil fuels. You know, you, you pay for a gas tank of gasoline and it's more like a tax, you know, because you've got to drive to get to the store, you've got to drive to get wherever you need to go. You know, that's, that's the way these stupid idiots set up this civilization. You know, we could have had more compact cities with large parks 
you know, and high rises, and everybody has a nice view. But no, we didn't do that. You know, the more they can parcel out acreage and sell it and and this and that, the more money they can make. You know, this whole thing has had to do with money. And like I was telling you earlier, that the in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And they don't tell you the truth about that. They don't. You know, Jesus Christ said you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. But uh, the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed. So the whole problem in the world today is these stupid religions. You know, we've got these Sunnis and the Shiites over in Iraq and Iran. Iraq, no, they're in Iraq. The Iranians got it under control, you know. It's like Saddam Hussein. <clears throat> He had it under control too, but <clears throat> the United States had to get involved because <clears throat> Saddam Hussein was like against Israel. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of stupid politicians that think that these people in Israel are actually God's chosen people. You know, some kind of mythology that 144,000 people are going to survive some kind of apocalyptic. Jesus Christ coming on the clouds thing, you know. And, you know, like, they didn't understand the Gospels. And they were, they, St. Paul is the whole one that caused the problems. And, uh, you know, with this stupid stuff about confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, that you're going to be saved. But, you know, we've got all these other dumb religions, too, especially this Islamic religion, you know. And, and uh, you know, they're... It's just a total nightmare how, how irrational people are. You know, Jesus Christ was supposed to be the Logos or the logic of God. And it's another one of those words <clears throat> that they don't translate correctly. In the book of Luke, or no, oh, John, John 1.1, 1, 1, there it is, right there. And, you know, the etymology, it rarely means the word. <clears throat> they did a dumb... <clears throat> they did a dumb translation of that word. You know, they, like, for a long time, they didn't let you know anything about what Jesus Christ really said. It was all written in Latin, and, you know, only the educated people could understand Latin. And, like, um, King James did a radical thing translating this Bible. And, you know, the first time I read it, I thought, wow, you know, this is... Jesus Christ upset the tables of the money changes and and um, told his disciples to go forth without money in their purses. I thought, wow, this guy's a total radical. You know, he says, peace and love turn the other cheek and all that stuff. And, I, I, you know, I just kind of wonder if the Messiah came back today, you know, what that person would say. You know, like, <clears throat> your job is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And, uh, you know, whether you believe in God or not is kind of, you know, what, what you've experienced in your life. You know, if you've ever come close to dying before, you know, through an out-of-body experience like a concussion or something, you might have an, a concept of God, you know, this light you see. And... You know, you kind of wonder, you know, what are we put on this earth for? You know, we've evolved. We've evolved from sponges and, and bacteria and things. And we've evolved into supposedly intelligent human beings. Yet we're like totally near the end of our existence if, you know, because we burnt up all these fossil fuels. And it's like, it's almost like tobacco smoking. They, they used to say that it wasn't dangerous and and what you know they people were ignorant you know but and the same with global warming they've got people that have a lot of money involved you know these oil companies you know if we stop burning fossil fuels and convert it to electric cars or or hydrogen cars or any or something but i think it's too late actually it's like you know we've reached this point that like you know i mean we could change, but it would really, I mean, we should have a little hope and faith that something really could happen that could reverse 
the what's going to happen you know so many the, if the oceans rise like they say it's going to and it's been that way like the arctic ocean the the arctic ice up there in the north pole has been like slowly disappearing every year they, they have a video on youtube and it's i think it's called the arctic death spiral and it shows you know how smaller and smaller the the amount of ice left at the end of the summer is up there and um you know the the northern hemisphere has it worse than the southern hemisphere because the northern hemisphere has all the industry you know we've got all this you know china and the soviet union and europe and the united states is all in the northern hemisphere and we're burning up all this carbon and so it takes a while for that carbon to migrate down to the south pole but it's slowly getting down there i don't know i think they say that it's like another 28 years you know before the northern climate affects the southern but they're still having global warming down there but like there's other things involved like the ocean warming and like we're supposed to have a strange el nino this year and i think they had one once you know here right here in tucson and they had like crazy flooding and but like it can also cause um uh, these el ninos can cause all kinds of different like like in india right now they're having extreme heat they you know i've been watching the temperature in new delhi it's been like over 110 for a long time in fact i think there was a an article in the paper today that was talking about the uh, problems in uh new delhi and stuff like that i don't know if i cut it out let's just go through these and see what we got here i'll just go through them really quick I, they had a full page spread about this guy and he is from uh where is he from like finland or sweden or something and he's wrote a book called my struggle and uh you know my struggle was the name of hitler's mein kampf and so they got here I'll let you look at the pictures up close you know they're making this guy look like he's Jesus Christ or something you know and it's become a really popular book there there is smoking a cigarette you know can you imagine Jesus Christ smoking a cigarette but this book you know i mean this is a a full page spread in the new york times book review and they're making such a big deal out of this guy's autobiography you know it's like you know it's three volumes in english translation and there's going to be six you know and people are just like so eager you know to read about this guy i mean you know it's like what's there to know what's there to read about you know it's like it's obvious that <clears throat> this money system that we have and this faith in in these paper dollar bills and these international boundary lines and and this and in, these insurance policies and the way we're living it's just totally like um not very how would you say communistic or community like you know the native americans they had their little they had their setups you know that they they can they condition their tepees and their houses were organized and you know they lived communally but today it's like well there's really no community at, at all and and um you know it's like um it 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 takes a village to um build a society and all that and you know all these people are like freaking out and going crazy and shooting people for stupid reasons there's been so much of this like this couple in Las Vegas that uh went and killed two policemen and then went to Walmart and started killing people and saying oh this is the revolution i mean i mean that is so stupid you know i mean to kill people and say this is the revolution you know the, you know i've been doing this for a long time you know talking about the kennedy assassination and famous people who believed in eliminating money but you know it's like you know what can we do about it it's like you know i mean it takes a lot of money to run for office and you kind of wonder 
you know, why didn't Robert Kennedy say anything about it? And I, I told you, I'm, I'm going to start reading this book. It's called Brothers by a guy named David Talbot. And at the very end of this book, he, start, he, starts, he talks about, on page 402, he starts talking, like I do, about E. Howard Hunt being involved and Frank Sturgis. So, you know, Robert Kennedy knew about, you know, his brother was killed in a coup d'etat, you know, and the whole history of the United States changed after that. And, you know, we got involved in this war, and Eisenhower warned about this military-industrial complex, and like Halliburton with Dick Cheney. You know, it's like these people just want to make money. That's all they care about is money, money, money. And we've got to burn these fossil fuels and sell this oil and gasoline to these people. And they didn't really care about global warming or they didn't want to think about it or they had cognitive dissidence uh, about what is going to happen. And they wanted to, you know, ignorance is bliss. And, you know, the glaciers were melting. There's really fantastic pictures of, you know, glaciers so many years ago and and the way it is today. Well, yeah, here it is. Scientists warn. This was on the front page of the New York Times. And the scientists warn of the oceans rising from polar melt. Two independent studies. Global warming fuels loss of ice sheet in the West Antarctic. So let me try to read through this really quick and see. Let's say a sea rise level of 10 feet or more may be unavoidable in coming centuries. So, yeah, they're telling you it won't happen for maybe a hundred years, but but it's I really, you know, you can't believe what they're saying. They never tell you the truth because, you know, they don't want to create panic or or mass hysteria like with the Kennedy assassination. If people realized that there was a coup d'etat here and that the Central Intelligence Agency killed John Kennedy, you know, like on the Warren Commission, they had Alan Dulles, who was head of the CIA, and uh, they had uh, C. Douglas Dillon, and um, let's see who is C. Douglas Dillon. Uh, let's see. Oh. oh, he was Kennedy's head of the Secret Service and Treasury. See, I made this article, and... Uh, you know, I ran, I ran, I tried to get into politics, you know, but I didn't quite have the money. And I really admire Gabby Giffords for getting in there. But, you know, none of these politicians tell you the truth about this stuff. And if you look at who is on these, these commissions that, that covered up this assassination, there was two different commissions. There was the Rockefeller Commission... And there was the Warren Commission, and the people that served on there were um, were like Ronald Reagan served on the Rockefeller Commission, and Lyman Lemnitzer, who came up with this Operation Northwoods thing, and Lane Kirkland, head of the AFL-CIO. I, I mean, they, they probably. I mean, who knows what he did there? I I don't really know, but. They, it was a whole big setup and a big farce. And the same with this 9/11 Commission thing. You know, I didn't believe when I first heard that the World Trade Center just fell down. It just came straight down and was disintegrated. Somebody told me that's what happened, and I couldn't believe it. And so when I got home, you know, I saw saw these things, and I was skeptical about it. But you know, I just Figured, you know, I, I'm, it's above me. I'll have to wait for somebody else to come out with the, with the analysis of this because it's beyond my intelligence. You know, how could a building come straight down like that and cause a pyroclastic cloud, you know, and, and all these, like, um, fire trucks were scorched and blown up and rusted out and the windows blown out. <clears throat> you know, and there were firemen that said they heard explosions, like a controlled demolition, boom, 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 boom. On each floor it came down like that. You know, there's so much evidence that this 9-11 thing was a false flag operation, you know, that they made it look like 
these um, Al Qaeda, you know, the boogeyman came. You know, some guy in a cave devised all this, and um, you know what it really was was a bunch of patsies. You know, these guys were like low-level CIA agents, and they said, "Hey, look, you know, we'll pay you a thousand dollars a month if you go take some airplane lessons right now." And so they went and did that, and then that was the evidence that these people were training to fly 747s or 737s or whatever they were into like buildings and this Pentagon thing. You know, this is a very you know, it's not a high building like that. I mean, it, it's, you know, the, and they've even said these pilots that were training these alleged um, suicide bombers that did, they didn't know how to fly a Cessna. And so they set these guys up and they blamed it on them and they claimed that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and they left Pearl Harbor open so that we could get involved in World War II. You know, Hitler was against this banking system. You know, he pulled himself out of the Depression, you know, the Great Depression in 1933 and all that. He didn't have any gold. The, the, the whole economy in Germany was looted, and they divided up the country, and, you know, Hitler was in a really bad situation. Well, Germany was, you know, and then... Um, so without any gold or silver, Hitler built up this military and um, his real plan was to go into the Soviet Union and, and Poland and, and make the Jews move to Madagascar. You know, it's kind of like the Muslims there today in, in Europe. It's nobody, I mean, they're really infiltrating and they've, caused, they've re created ghettos in France and places like that where they, they don't want any... Uh, you know, French people to go in there. And it's just, this whole world has just gotten so chaotic. And it's basically because of this, you know, world population growth. And so they're all, you know, even like right here in Tucson, with all these immigrant children that are coming up from El Salvador and Honduras, they're all coming up here. These children, you know, the parents told them that like if you come up here to the to the United States and you get yourself in here, that the Uncle Sam will take care of you and reunite you with your family. You know, it's like how many economic refugees can the United States take? You know, it's like America is becoming a third world country, and it has declined. And um, you know, the the gross national product may appear high per capita, but like if you look at where all the money's going, it keeps going to these rich plutocrats, and the the plutocrats have have, have the power to change the laws here. You know, money talks, and they they bribe these egoistic, stupid politicians. You know, even Bill Clinton, he was like a real dumb politician with Monica Lewinsky. He ruined Monica Lewinsky's life, and you know Hillary Clinton is not much better. She's married to him and let him get away with it. But, like, this Clinton guy signed these these papers, like, on the very last day of his presidency that allowed all this funny money stuff to go on with these derivatives and credit default swaps and with Alan Greenspan, the head of the Fed, everybody thought we were you know, like it was the Roaring Twenties or something. And, you know, I don't really know. I just, you know, back then I was more afraid, I was afraid that, you know, I knew it was unsustainable. I mean, I've known since, like, I was in high school in, in you know, the 70s that life as we're living it is unsustainable. You know, there's just not enough uh, um, of all these elements that we need to, maintain this kind of a, a quality of life and you know not only that but we're running out of water there's like water catastrophes all over the place they're saying that like Lake uh, Powell and uh, you know just north of Arizona here is at like 40 percent capacity and like um, 
I just heard that Lake Mead, which is below Lake Powell, it's where Las Vegas gets all their water from, and where people here down in Tucson, Arizona, get their water, and California, Los Angeles, all these people are getting their water from from the Colorado River. But Lake Mead is at the lowest level it's ever been. I, I mean, this early in the year to be that low. And on my photography site, if you go to my website, I've got like, I've got, a, if you, well, you know, you, it's like Lake Mead has gone down so much. But every year I go by there, you know, I come back from this Burning Man festival and I go through Vegas and take a picture of Hoover Dam and the water just keeps getting lower and lower and lower but it's controlled because of Lake Powell and they've always kept a lot of water up there but this year Lake Powell is I don't know when the last time it was down that low so anyway you know this is like fool's paradise Los Angeles you know Las Vegas definitely you know I like you know if 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 you were going to live in a i mean this whole southwest area from like mid texas up all the way through nevada new mexico is kind of like in a a very precarious situation because of um the water and the changing climate so, like, what do we got here? Here's an article that says that climate change doomed the ancients. And now, I'm just going to, I've got a little bit here. Let's see what this says here. It says, this month, a report, if you, um, well, this guy from Oklahoma doesn't believe that, he believe, thinks global warming is a hoax. Climate change doomed the ancients. Global conflict fueled by climate change goes back 3,000 years. Wow. And then the conclusion is, it remains to be seen if we will cause the collapse of our own. So, I don't know. I mean, like I said, there's all these articles that are telling us that here it says the drought is thought to have affected much of what is now Greece, Israel, Lebanon, and Syria. Oh yeah, I read this thing. And some of these people that lived back there, what was this? Um, A long time ago, uh, when is this? But you know, they're talking about famines from, well here it is, 1200 BC, I think. Okay, sometime around then. And they've got these documents that like you know the the king over here is telling you hey man you know we're having a a horrible drought you know can you send some food over here that's what this article is about and so you know they had droughts all the time you know they talk about in the bible you know pray that it doesn't happen in winter and all that stuff and you know the end times are going to have you know wars and rumors of wars and famines and the seven horsemen or the apocalypse and all that stuff because it's been a recurring thing you know uh, Easter Island they weren't very smart and they ended up becoming extinct on Easter Island and you know I just I don't know if there's any hope but but this guy Alexander Shulgin died he was the man who invented well he rediscovered what ecstasy was and you know, I used to do this show all the time and go downtown and take some ecstasy and stuff. And uh, so, when he was 88 years old, he discovered a lot of different medications. And then these stupid religious people here, it says that uh, a Gallup poll found that 42% of Americans believe God created humans in their present form 10,000 years ago. And Michael Rubio told GQ in 2012, whether the earth was created in seven days or seven actual eras, I'm not sure we'll ever be able to answer that. It's one of the great mysteries. I mean, how could anybody take these stupid politicians seriously? You know, they give these idiots all this publicity and you wonder why. It's like a stupid distraction. You know, why doesn't 
somebody tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. What we need is some kind of a Messiah, you know, to that has, you know, all the answers or that can explain everything. It's it's so simple, you know, like ever since uh, World War II with this gold standard and this funny money stuff and the Jewish banking system, the amount of money charged for interest. You know, Hitler was against interest. One of the National Socialist Party program planks was to get rid of interest. And it was a competition. The, the Nazis were socialists and um, they took good care of the workers and they had resorts and they had ships and excursions and they gave the workers a, a lot of vacation and they built autobahns and they had they were starting to build Volkswagens you know there was a lot of hope for the future and there was living space in the east you know it's like was Poland better off under um, Stalin than he would have been if they got rid of these unproductive people over there that were more interested in their pie in the sky and their dumb books and stupid religions and things. You know, I think religion has has really been a big problem in this world. And it's, the whole problem with the religion, like I was telling you, is that it's irrational. You know, if there's one thing, you know, God is rational and the devil is a liar and a false accuser. If you look at the etymology, the word for the devil, uh, the Satan, and it means to slander and, and falsely accuse. So, you know, they just don't tell you the whole truth about these things. And, you know, there's really nobody that could say it, you know, without being afraid of of getting killed or something. Like, here's here's a book I'm reading now. It's called, um, oh gosh, huh? it's called Republican Party Animal. And this guy... He was a, a Jewish Holocaust denier, and he got caught. Uh, you know, he he had life. He had his life was threatened because he denied that. You know, the practicality of exterminating millions of people with louse disinfectant, this hydrogen cyanide stuff, or diesel exhaust. You know, they claim that like eight hundred thousand people were killed at Treblinka with diesel exhaust, which is not very practical. But this guy, um, he's a Jewish Holocaust denier. Well, not he's a Holocaust revisionist. And so I've been reading this book. He had to go underground because he was threatened by uh, people. You know, people that deny the Holocaust, it's against the law in Europe. You know, you can't say things about you know, the forensics or the logistics of cremating and and exterminating millions of people. And they've revised the numbers. You know, David Cole in this book, he points out that, you know, they've revised the amount of people that were allegedly killed at Auschwitz. Originally, they said there was 4 million people that are killed. And now they say, the, the experts, the so-called historians, say 700,000 but that's still a, a vast exaggeration because, I mean, a lot of people died there from disease and, and epidemics and things when the typhus broke out. And that's what the last disinfestant was for. So they, they made a boogeyman out of Adolf Hitler like they do anybody they want to demonize. You know, the, the, you know, the devil is a slanderer. And so they slandered Hitler and they slandered Pol Pot and they slandered Gaddafi and they slandered Saddam Hussein, and and they slandered Castro, Fidel Castro, so that, um, you know, you, and Jesus Christ, he was slandered by the f- religious hypocrites of the day, and they said he was possessed by a devil, and but he was a person who believed in peace and love and told you that you should not carry gold and silver in your purse. And there's a lot of famous people who believed in eliminating money, and, you know, Karl Marx believed in eliminating money, but you don't hear too many um, so-called communists talk about eliminating money. But um, <clears throat> even, uh, you know, Plato, the guardians of the Republic, were not allowed to touch gold and silver. 
and uh, you know it's a lot of fame you know St. Thomas More's Utopia they didn't touch gold or silver and uh, Shakespeare was pretty much aware of the problems of money and he, in King Henry the, the seventh or uh, sixth he said that when I am king and king I shall be there shall be no money but the first thing we do is let's kill all the lawyers so they don't quote that whole thing, you know, when they talk about, you know, let's kill all the lawyers first. The, the paragraph before that says, there shall be no money. And, you know, money, <clears throat> it's like Tolstoy said, is a new and terrible form of slavery. It's, you know, it's like there's so many people involved, like bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks, all these people are just pushing these papers and, and making you a slave with this interest. You know, Hitler wanted to get rid of interest. It was one of the National Socialist Party program planks was to get rid of interest. And uh, so, you know, this whole war, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, it's a dumbest war. You know, the, the whole thing was supposed to have been to save Poland. And, and eventually Poland ended up behind the Iron Curtain. And, um, and the Soviet Union took over half of Europe. And we had this Cold War. So who won World War Two? You know, we were supposed to, you know, Hitler was so evil. Well, what was so evil about him? You know, he wanted to, to, to move these, these Jews out of Germany. It's like a lot of people would like to move these Muslims out. You know, it's like a lot of the Jews back then, they weren't working. And plus they had this, this banking system that, you know, was kind of, you know, like Shylock and, and all this other stuff. It wasn't good. And, um, you know, a lot of people have understood that, that money is a, a cause of all the problems. I'm just thinking that, you know, if Hitler would have won World War II, we wouldn't have had the Iron Curtain, we wouldn't have had the Cold War, and we probably wouldn't have Israel either because Hitler's original plan was to send these people that couldn't go anywhere else to Madagascar and it was called the Madagascar plan but you know and now Madagascar is one of the most you know unique environments there ever was so like I mean you know I think the biggest mistake started with World War II and we just had this 70th anniversary of D-Day you know and they were glorifying these soldiers that fought against Hitler. But it's just another one of these wars that they fooled us with. You know, they fooled us, you know, with this 9-11 thing. A lot of people joined up. Oh, these guys, you know, in, in Afghanistan, they, they, they bombed our World Trade Center and caused these buildings to disintegrate into powder. And the only thing left was like steel girders. You know, there was no glass, there was no telephones, there was no desks, just a pile of steel girders, which they immediately shipped over to China to have melted into sewer lids and stuff. So that got us involved in Afghanistan, and so they could start growing opium there and stupefy the masses and make the whole world terrible. And that's the way this whole world has been. It's been a lie since World War II. They've been lying to us. Maybe, you know, I don't... You know, World War One was a big scam, and uh, they were all fighting for, you know, Wall Street, and Bill Clinton had these laws changed just before he was no longer president, and those laws changed the stock market and allowed all this speculation and these commodities and everything. And so, you know, these stupid politicians don't understand the truth or they don't want to say it because... They're afraid to, and they know there's no other solution. But at least we wouldn't have to be slaves, and we could live the rest of our lives in a evolved, humane way without um, money and without having to work at these unhealthy, unnecessary jobs that are like killing the environment and causing all this stress instead of peace and love like it should be. So anyway, my name is Raquel in order. Buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. God bless, peace and love. Bye.